the GameStop uprising. The biggest thing to happen with video games since Sonic got busted for doping. But if you haven't heard the news, what happened was that some Wall Street hedge funds bet a lot of money that the stock price of the video game store GameStop would fall. But a bunch of people on Reddit found out about those bets, so they started buying GameStop shares so that the price would go up and the hedge funds would lose a lot of money. And lose a lot of money they did in the billions of dollars. So, as you can imagine, Wall Street is pretty unhappy with those Reddit investors. A handful of industry leaders are calling for an investigation because of the angry mob that's formed against them. Last week wasn't a free market, it was a free-for-all market. No doubt about it, for my 25 years in the business, I've never seen this form of collusion on such a widespread fashion. This type of behavior is not the behavior that you want to be replicating. I think there's something obviously wrong, and it's the gamification of Wall Street. Talked to an analyst this morning, guys. He said this is dangerous. They, they forget they're buying a stock in a piece of a company. It's not just some stim symbol that you play hot potato with. Just because you throw the Hail Mary pass in your backyard and it's caught for the touchdown in the wind doesn't mean you're Tom Brady. What's going through my mind is, is how irrelevant I feel and how every day I just don't want to get out of bed and how it's the least amount of fun I think I've ever had. Oh, man. These Wall Street guys are taking this so hard that their interviews are just turning into therapy sessions. I feel so irrelevant right now, and I'm not having any fun, and I, I just remembered my parents never hung my paintings on the refrigerator. <laughs> but the truth is, what the Redditors did here is nothing new. In fact, the only thing that makes this so unique is that this is just the first time that the little guy has used the big guy's tactics against them. Because when it comes to manipulating the market and treating trades like a game, no one is better at it than Wall Street. I mean, they do this shit all the time. In fact, let's take a look at a few examples, starting with the scam one big bank pulled just a few years ago. The New York Times reporting over the weekend that Goldman Sachs is running a scheme to artificially inflate aluminum prices. An aluminum warehouse controlled by Goldman Sachs holds the equivalent of a quarter of the annual North American demand for the metal, but only offloads or distributes a required minimum of 3,000 tons a day. No more, no less, whatever the demand. Pushing prices of the metal higher even as demand has declined. Goldman profits from this practice two ways. First, from the extended rents paid to store the metal, and second, by the bets made on aluminum futures by its trading arm. The inflated aluminum pricing by Goldman and other financial players has cost American consumers $5 billion over the last three years. Yeah, that's right. Basically, Goldman Sachs manipulated the supply of aluminum by only letting out a little bit at a time. You know, the same way Daniel Day-Lewis limits the supply of movies he's in. I mean, the dude's only been in six movies over the past 20 years. The Rock made that many movies yesterday. Get to work, Danny! By the way, for the rest of the segment, I'm gonna be pronouncing it aluminum, even though the correct pronunciation is aluminium. But we had a vote, and all the people I work with are American, and so they won. And I didn't want to accept the election result, but then I was like, no, we don't want to do that again. And I'm sorry, guys, but aluminum should never be hoarded. It needs to be used the way God intended, to make condoms for robots or for Marjorie Taylor Greene to wear as a hat. And believe it or not, Goldman Sachs got away with this scheme for years until people caught onto it. So I guess you could say that their aluminum plan was foiled. Wow! Bam, bam, bam! Now, as crazy as this is, it's actually a common tactic with Wall Street. You take over a market and then manipulate its supply to drive up the price. Like how JP Morgan used its control over electricity to fleece California. JP Morgan Chase accused of manipulating energy prices and so driving up the electric bills of millions of Americans. At night, when energy prices are very low, essentially, they would bid them up so that in the morning, the companies would go to buy energy and find the prices artificially high. It takes a few hours to get a power plant going, so they would have to buy the energy in the morning when it was very, very expensive. In one case, J.P. Morgan duped California utilities into paying $999 per megawatt hour when the going rate was only $12. Yo, this shit is crazy! It's like these guys were sitting around a table like, I'm tired of just abusing our power metaphorically. Let's do it for real. 
Basically, because of JP Morgan, the cost of electricity went up from $12 per megawatt to almost $1,000 per megawatt. Even Amish people were like, yo, I don't even know what electricity is, but that shit is messed up, B. I hope the Amish community doesn't come after me on Twitter for that one. I mean, at that price, I would actually be less upset if you jumped me and robbed me. At least then it feels like you had to work for it. And the truth is, people, this isn't something hedge fund people are ashamed of. In fact, some of them even brag about it on the TV. Jim Cramer once made a fortune running a successful hedge fund. He went on to host his own TV show, Mad Money, that offers stock tips to investors. But as Kramer has found out lately, a lot of Americans are mad at him. This video, made in 2006, has suddenly gone viral. Kramer explains to his own financial website, thestreet.com, how he could influence stock prices up and down as the manager of a massive hedge fund. You know, a lot of times when I was short at my hedge fund and I was positioned short, meaning I needed it down, uh, I would... Uh, create a, um, a level of activity beforehand that could drive the futures. It doesn't take much money, but it's a fun game and it's a l lucrative game. And I would encourage anyone who's in the hedge fund game to do it because it's legal. Right. And it, um, it is a very quick way to make money and very satisfying. Okay. Um, well, by the way, no one else in the world would ever admit that, but I can care. These people got no shame, no shame, zero, not a zilch. He's just out here boasting about his evil plans. I mean, the only people who do that are hedge fund guys and bond villains. I mean, listen to him, listen to him talk about it. It's legal and it's very satisfying. Just as a general rule, whenever you have to remind someone that something is legal, eh, it's probably shady. You know, no one's ever like, hey, Trevor, you wanna go to the Cheesecake Factory? It's legal. Uh... But when it comes to hurting people in order to make a buck, Nothing compares to the Great Recession of 2008, which was caused by, guess who? Wall Street manipulating the markets. During the hot housing market, banks took millions of home mortgages, many held by people who could not afford them, and bundled them into packages as mortgage securities. J.P. Morgan today admitted that it sold those packages to investors even though its executives knew that many of the mortgages were highly suspect. When the market collapsed, those packages became mostly worthless. Goldman sold investors subprime mortgage packages, but then made its own bet those same investments would lose value without telling investors. Goldman employees themselves use profanity to disparage the deals. Boy, that timber wolf was one sh deal. And when asked if any of the executives at least felt partly responsible for the financial collapse. There's things that we wish we could have done better in hindsight. But or even regret. Regret to me means something that you feel like you did wrong. And, and I don't have that. When you hear your own employees or read about those in the emails, do you feel anything? I, th I think that's very unfortunate to have on email. Are you embarrassed? <laughs> and, and, and very unfortunate. I don't. I don't on again, email, please, please don't take that. How the wrong about way. feeling that way? I think it's very unfortunate for anyone to have said that. God damn. Even the crowd, you see them? Even the crowd in the chamber was like, oh! You know how bad you have to screw things up to turn a Senate hearing into a Jerry Springer taping? But this is how you know how psychotic these guys are. Not only did they tank the economy, but they talk about emotions like they're serial killers. Do you regret hurting these people? Regret is a thing that one feels when one has done something wrong. <laughs> I mean, how can you expect these guys to change their behavior? when they can't even express their remorse. The closest Wall Street comes to reflecting is doing coke off of a mirror. So after all the damage Wall Street has done to people's lives, please miss me with all of this whining about how unfair it is for Reddit to boost GameStop. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying all these Reddit guys are heroes, but I will say it has been fun watching how some of the people who got rich off of GameStop have been spending their money. While GameStop has minted plenty of millionaires, many retail investors are using their more modest profits to pay bills. One Reddit user even posting that he paid off his student loan debt thanks to the money he's made off of GameStop the last few days. 10-year-old Jaden Carr. Two years ago, his mom bought him 10 shares of GameStop as a Kwanzaa gift. Back then, they were $6 each. Now, he sold them for more than $3,000. What are you gonna do with the money that you made on GameStop? I have already saved 2200 of it, and the rest of the 
thousand is going to go to invest in more companies. Hunter Khan cashed in on the GameStop phenomenon last week, but didn't just cash in for himself. He used some of the money he made to donate six Nintendo Switches and games to the Children's Hospital in Minnesota. One day trader who cashed in on the craze walked into a GameStop store this week and started handing out $100 bills to employees. After the Robinhood app halted trading on GameStop, one investor chartered a plane to fly a banner over the company's headquarters saying, Suck my nuts, Robinhood. Ooh, that's a gangster move right there. It's like Twitter, but in the sky. Now, you could say it's childish to spend money you took from Wall Street to dunk on Wall Street, and that may be, but in the words of Jim Cramer, it's legal and very satisfying.